What's up guys, H of Masters here, today taking a look at a mock of the Journey to One Makuta. So yesterday there were some pictures released that kind of just gave us a little bit of a good idea on how to build it. So using those pictures, I did my best and made what I think at least is a fairly accurate rendition of Makuta. So let's go ahead and just take a look at it. So taking a look at the torso, you can see there's a lot of stuff going on here. I'm just going to go ahead and take a picture and put it on the screen so you can see how many like attachment points there are. And there's just all sorts of crazy stuff. And there's just an overall crazy build to the whole thing. So taking a look at the torso, you can see on the bottom half here, we have this sort of like little, whatever this is, sort of just kind of that little cloth thing or whatever I guess it wants to resemble with all these pieces. You go up here and you can see you have that chain with all of the masks. You have the Tahu Uniter Mask, Onui Uniter Mask, and then the Skull Grinder Mask. You have this random ribcage piece, which works pretty well, but it's just kind of there. You have this whole thing right here with the sort of Akimu shield piece, which is actually kind of facing a different way. I kind of thought it'd be facing the same way that it is on Akimu shield, but it is sort of like inside out. And then it has all these pieces surrounding it. And it just has this overall kind of cool look to it. It's very well filled in. If you look from the sides, you can see there's actually a whole lot of stuff going on here. There's like um, some hand pieces. There's even some random just like bone pieces in there. You can see right here. They try to give it in some more filling on the sides and just cover up some of those gaps. So they did do a relatively good job there. And it's just really interesting. There's a lot of stuff going on there. So taking a look at the legs from the front here, you can see there isn't as much stuff going on in the front. You can just see you got the feet here, and the little armor pieces, and then there's all this stuff going on. But taking a look at it from the side, you can see there's a whole lot more going on. You have all of this stuff, which is actually just attached to a bunch of other random points. You have this little thing on the leg, which I don't really like the way it's attached to this piece. I feel like they could have very easily done a better attachment there, rather than having the random ball joint stick out. But I mean, it is a combiner model, so there are going to be some little things in there. And then you see the side of the feet, which personally, I don't like these feet at all. I don't think they support Makuta that well, but they are okay. They get the job done, but they do sort of, uh, time to time, you have issues where you're going to have to grab it because it might fall, because the feet just don't support it that well. There are some nice details in the feet, such as the black Barak eye over there and these two trans red Barak eyes. Alright, so taking a look at his arm, starting with his left arm, first thing I want to note is that I don't really like the way this whole thing over here is done, because the way it's done, as you can see when you take a look at it from the side, you can see it just really pops out, so it gives this sort of thing just a really skinny look, and it goes from being super rough to just going super skinny really quick, and I just don't like that personally. Although, it is a pretty cool idea, it just doesn't work for me. On the lower half of the arm, you can see the first function, which is fairly simple. You just move this gear, and this thing will pop forward like this. Nothing too crazy. And you can see there's two rubber bands here, which attach into place. And you can also see he has his hand, which again, nothing too crazy. It's just a foot with the, um, just the piece attached here. Taking a look at his other arm, I have the same issue on the top. So going to the lower half, you can see there is a gear here. I don't really know what the point of it is because there's no function. It's just kind of there. It doesn't do anything. And there also is a gunmetal ribcage, which I'm also not a huge fan of because I feel like if they would have just gone with the red ribcage, it would have just worked a whole lot better with the color scheme. But again, you know, it is a combiner model, so it does have some flaws. So taking a look at his staff, his staff is just kind of all over the place. You can see on this lower half here, you have this sort of just area. You got this little hilt here. It looks relatively nice using those horns from the uh, skull grinder set. Then it goes up. There's a random friction gear here just for some detail. You move on up again. You see another friction gear. You have the drill. Then you move up to this top area. And you can spin it around sort of if you want to. It's nothing too crazy. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the staff. All it really does is just spin around, but it is a relatively nice staff. It does look cool, and it does add a nice sort of menacing look to Makuta. So taking a look at the back, starting with the lower half, you can see you have the Creature Fire or Ikir uh, mask over here, along with these two horns from Umrak the Destroyer, which are just added there for added detail. You move up a little bit, and you can still see they still have a lot of detail all over the place. You move up, and then you can start seeing some... 
just some areas you have just a giant technic beam that's there so it looks very hollow in that area however when you move closer to the top you can see it gets a lot more detailed again you do have a gearbox which i'll get into just a little bit later and you have where his little um shoulder armors are attached which is actually just this one whole thing which gets attached along with this beast jaw which is nice for some added detail and gives a nice look to him where his mask is so now going on to his function you can see there is a gearbox now this is very stiff there is a whole lot of friction in here so it actually is kind of hard to turn but doing your best you can try to move it up there you can see it moves a little bit but with all the friction in there there isn't a whole lot that you can do and in addition just the way it's built with this sort of technic beam in here this l-shaped technic beam there is a little bit of restriction as to how far you can move in there as well taking a quick look at the top you can see not a whole lot going on you can see a little bit of connections in there there is this random just sort of um axle sticking out that doesn't connect to anything although it does blend in very well since it is you know a black axle but that is just something to know it also does have a relatively cool look from the top you can see all the stuff going into it and it's just a relatively cool thing so what a lot of you guys are probably wondering is how tall is this makuta model so taking it a side-by-side -side comparison to witch doctor you can see it is almost the exact same height as Wix Doctor, if not the exact same height. Wix Doctor may be just slightly taller, I'm not sure, but as you can tell, he is very tall. So now obviously we'll take a look at the least accurate part, the mask. Now obviously we do not have a mask of ultimate power, because as of now, there has been just no release of it, and there still are no plans, although they may release it in a poly bag, it is unlikely. So taking a look at the mask, we do have the substitute of the mask of control, you can see if you move to the side a little bit, there is a neck piece, which you can see is a just a three-sized uh, red armor shell connected to a generic CCBS piece. So the neck is posable. If you want to, you do have all your sort of forms of looking around. You can look relatively, relatively far down for the neck. He's got a relatively good look there. You can move it all the way up like this. You can move Makuta's head way up like that. You obviously can get your uh, your looks to the side, left and right, all that good stuff. You just have a lot of good articulation in the neck, and it's just a relatively solid job by LEGO. So overall, this Makuta model from Jury to One is extremely solid. I don't really have much problems with it other than the fact that there isn't a whole lot of coverage in the back, although that can be forgiven. I don't like the feet because I just don't think the feet are good enough to really support all the weight that comes with it. I'm not a huge fan up here of this sort of just slimming down on the upper arms. I think that could have been done better with just a little bit different armor pieces, maybe some armor on the side. And the gear function, no, the gear function is a nice touch, but the gear function barely even works because there's so much friction. So it's nice to see it in there, but it barely even matters because there's so much friction that is barely usable. But overall, this is very solid. Obviously, this is not 100% accurate. It is the best that I could do off the pictures that we do have. And overall, very happy with it. And yeah, that's pretty much it for my look at the Makuta from Journey to One. I hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.